Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this herringbone neck warmer that you can see Melba wearing here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry about my voice. Okay, so to make this herringbone neck warmer you'll need some yarn of your choice and I'm going with this one here. It's a really soft and fluffy polyamide acrylic and wool blend and I like the way that it interacts with the uh, with the herringbone pattern so I've chosen that it's about a three weight but you could go more chunky you could go finer weight you could um, yeah you can choose winter summer yarns for this project um, although you know it's mainly meant as a neck warmer but you could you could definitely do a summer version of this um, just if I can pause for a moment and excuse my voice, I am recovering from the flu, so and my voice is a little bit husky and not quite as vital as normal, so I apologise for that. Uh, you'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn, and I'm using 4.5 millimetres today. You'll need some scissors. You'll need a darning needle to weave in ends and perhaps sew on your button depending on the size of the holes of your button. So I've got this button here as a, um, a wooden, wooden button and you might need to wait till the end to choose your button because our buttonhole will be the gaps between our stitches. So you might need to wait and see how, what, you know, how big that, that gap is. I know that for me that this is going to be fine because it sort of it's got this you know it's quite thin one way um, narrow one way and long so it 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 works I know it works well with my stitch sizes in this yarn and this hook size so I'm going for a wooden button like this and whatever button you're choosing just make sure you've got a needle that fits through the eyes now you might want, this is just optional, but you might want some little push studs um, just to um, help with the, so with a scarf, just to show you one here. So it, it, it folds over, and so we've got the button on this side, let's just turn it the right way up, button on this side, and the little push stud just holds the shape of the scarf in place. But that's just optional, you don't have to do that. But if you've got little push studs, and then you might need a fine needle and thread to sew on that push stud. And finally, a tape measure to take a measurement of your cat's neck circumference. That's just optional. You don't need the exact uh, measurement for this tutorial. I'll include a guide in the description box below to standard cat neck circumferences. So you can work off that guide. Um, you can try it on your cat. You you know you don't actually have to have an exact an exact measurement, but you know that always that always helps. Okay, so to make this uh, herringbone neck warmer, you'll need to know how to make a slip knot on your hook, how to create a chain, how to herringbone double crochet, and I'll show you how to do that. And that will just create this. You can see that we've got this kind of herringbone pattern moving through the rows here and I'll show you how to do that and then you'll need to know how to double crochet two stitches together so just a normal double crochet two together from there you'll need to know how to weave in ends um, how to size this for your cat um, how to sew on a button and you may want to sew on a little push stud which is what I've done underneath here um, yeah, so just some basic sewing techniques. And then after that, um, yeah, it's pretty quick and, and fun to, to work up. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so take your yarn and you'll make a slip knot onto your hook, however you do that. And then you're going to make a chain to the width that you want your scarf to be. So I'm going to make mine to about about five centimeters or so, maybe a bit wider, but let's just see how we go. So it doesn't matter how many 
you chain it's an you know however you, you go work on the width that you want rather than the number of chains so that's two so I'll just make a chain to about sort of five ish centimeters so you could go you know you can go as wide as you want just bear in mind that you know, you, you don't want it too wide. I mean, you might want it quite a bit narrower than what I'm doing. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, that's about seven. About seven centimetres. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to go with about that, that sort of width. So the width is entirely up to you. And, uh, yeah, so choose, choose how you would like that to look. And then you're going to chain an extra three. And three. So no matter how many you've got um, in your base chain, you'll chain an extra three. And that's going to work as your turning chain. Okay, so um, starting from the fourth chain from the hook, because we're using that, that chain three as our turning chain, you're going to start with um, your double crochet herringbone stitch. So we're going to, you can work into the front of the chain if you want to, so into the front of the Vs, or you can flip over and work into these, what I call the third loop of the chain. Okay, so I'm going to work into the third loop. So one, two, three, and I'll do that into that fourth chain. Now, how we do a herringbone, a double crochet herringbone stitch is we yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then keep pulling through the second loop as well. Okay, so you've got two of your loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Oops. And this this uh, fluffy yarn might make it a little bit more difficult to see. Hopefully, not too much. So yarn over, insert your hook in the next chain. Yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the second loop as well. Yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over through two. So it's like like a double crochet but there's just that little extra step in there. Okay so you're going to work that one in each of your chains, one of those double crochet herringbone stitches in each of your chains until you get to the last chain and the last chain is going to be a little bit different so and, and this will be the same for the last stitch of every uh, every row so you just go ahead and, and finish off doing those Double crochet herringbone variations in each chain until you get to the last chain and I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm at my last stitch here, or my last chain. So what we're going to do in this last chain is double crochet two together. Okay, so yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and stop. And then yarn over again, go back into the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. So in the last stitch of every row, we'll be double crocheted two, two together. Okay, and that will just help to keep this, the edges, a little bit more even and regular. So you'll chain three and turn to move on to your next row. In that first stitch we're going to start with our, um, our double crochet herringbone stitches. So oops, as you did before, so pull through there, pull through and then pull through two. Okay so just the same as we did before, those Double crochet stitches with the variation and you'll work that all the way down to the last stitch. Now just make sure that you don't miss the last stitch and also that you're not working into the chain. Okay, so you've got your turning chain. Just make sure that you work to the last stitch and then we're going to do that double crochet two together in the last stitch again. Okay, so basically what the rest of this will be is just repeating row two which is one double crochet herringbone stitch in each stitch. 
to the last stitch where we do our double crochet two together. Okay, and then we'll just continue to however long we want the scarf to be. And that will depend on, you know, your cat's neck circumference, how you want it to fit and sit. So whether you want it to sit slightly more loosely, whether you want it sit more snugly around the neck, that's entirely up to you. So go ahead, actually let's just finish this on camera together. I'm nearly at the end of my row already. Just a couple more stitches to go here. So, it, you know, it just takes you a moment or two to get into the rhythm of these double crochet variations. Is that one? No, that's, I've got one more here. And then our double crochet two together in this last stitch. So yeah, just be careful that you're not increasing, you're not working into the, the chain at the end there. Just work your double crochet two together. So if you're not sure, you can count your stitches and make sure that you've always got the same number of stitches. Okay, so just make sure you're not increasing down on this end. So we'll chain three, and then we're just repeating row two. For however many centimeters you want to make the length of your scarf. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work out the length that I want. I'm probably, you want, what will give you a general idea is you want your cat's neck circumference plus the overlap <coughs> of the width of your scarf. So mine's about seven centimeters. Might, let me just check again. Yeah, it's about seven centimetres, seven, seven and a half. So you want to add that width to the length that you do of your scarf as well as um, the neck circumference. So for example, Melba's neck circumference is around 23, 24 centimetres, let's say 24 centimetres for this case. Um, I'll add the seven, let's say I'll round it up to eight, I'll add eight centimeters onto that length. So where am I at? About 32 centimeters. And then I want it to fit not too tightly. I'll probably add an extra centimeter or two to that as well. So what's that? 24 uh, plus eight, 32. Let's say I'll go to around 33, 34 centimeters. And I'll, you know, I'll try it on her. I'll see how it's going. It will depend also on the amount of give that you've got in the, the yarn that you're using. And this one does have quite a lot of give. Okay, so it's, um, it's, it is going to loosen as she wears it. Um, it'll depend, you know, it, it'll depend on your crochet technique. Yeah, so lots of different factors. So just check it on your cat before you, you know, you decide to, to finish. Just make sure that you've got the overlap that you want. And just bearing in mind, and I'm sure, sorry that I haven't got one ready made to show you, just bear in mind that we're going to overlap the two, the two edges of the scarf, okay? So you might be able to check out the photos at the beginning, um, or maybe I could put a photo, I'll, I'll add a photo into, um, into the video, um, where it, you'll just see it overlaps, okay? So you want to allow for that for sure. So, um, yeah, keep on going, repeating your row two with those double crochet variations, one in each stitch to the last stitch, and then double crochet two together in the last stitch of every row. So I'll see you, yeah, once I've got close to my length, and, uh, yeah, catch you soon. And actually, just to mention, you can probably start to see this sort of herringbone effect coming in. So one row goes this way, one goes slightly that way. So slightly this way, slightly that way. Okay, so you can kind of already see that herringbone pattern. So hopefully you can see that on your work too. Okay, so just to come in with an update. So hopefully you're moving along um, through the length of your scarf. And uh, I just wanted to once again mention... Hopefully you've got a, an edge that, you know, is pretty pretty nice and straight. Obviously it won't be perfect, but hopefully it's nice and straight. So what, uh, just to just to recap on, on uh, why we do the, the double crochet two together at the end there, is it just, it just compensates for this chain plus 
the stitch at the beginning of the next row. Okay, so well, it, I mean, it doesn't compensate for it completely, but it helps to even up that edge. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. I'm probably about halfway. Let's just see where I'm at. Yeah, 19. So 19 centimeters I've got there. So I'm going to go for it a little bit longer. Obviously, I need about 30. Yeah, between 35 and 40 centimeters. So I've got a little way to go. So uh, yeah, I'll keep going and catch you soon. Okay, so I've got about 37 centimetres there now. So just to recap, reminder, it's 30, sorry, 24 centimetres for Melbourne's next circumference, plus the overlap, so the width of the overlap, which for me is 8 centimetres. And then I've allowed, you know, it's about 5 centimetres extra to allow for the fit that I want. Okay, so yeah, it's around 30, it's 36, 37 centimetres. And that, so how this will work, so we've got the overlap, we're going to sew on our button, and this will just fold down behind the neck. Okay, so I'm just going to simply yarn over and pull through, and I'll just snip off, snip off my excess there. And we'll just weave in, let's weave in one of our tail ends together. So just take your, take your darning needle, thread it with your yarn, and you're just going to weave it down into the, into some of those double crochet stitches. Just to secure it. So don't pull too tight and just change directions a couple of times. So I'll just move down along here. And I think I might just come back along here. Actually, let's go up a little bit. So double back. Um, at least once, but just make sure you don't double back exactly where you've exactly where you've come from. And once again, just make sure you're not distorting any of your stitches. We're pulling too tight, and then snip off the excess, and you'll have a second tail to weave in. So go ahead and weave in your second tail, your your starting tail, and uh, I'll meet you once I've done mine. Okay, so there's both of my ends woven in, and now we're going to sew on our button. Now, um, you'll just make sure that your button, so we're going to sew it onto this bottom, bottom edge, bottom, bottom end, and you just want to make sure that it will fit through the gaps in your stitches somewhere, okay? So depending on how you've, you've crocheted, it might need to fit in one of the end ones, but you've got lots of options as far as space where you can feed it through, okay? So between any of your stitches... So just make sure that whatever your button you've chosen, it will fit through those gaps. Now, you'll sew on your button. So thread your needle with, you can, you can use yarn, you can use a, a thread. I'm going to use my yarn because I've got nice big holes in my button. So you want it to line up along the edges. Okay, and then put your but button in the corresponding, so I'm going to have mine coming through that space there. So it's going to be right on the edge here. So you'll place your button where you need it to be. And you'll just simply start to sew it on. Depending on your button, it might have four holes, two holes, 
large holes, small holes, just sew on your button, just simple, simple sewing stitches. Just make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want there to be any choking hazard for your cat. And then once it's nice and securely on there, what I would recommend that you do is at the back here, I'm just going to take my take my tail over to the other tail of this yarn that I'm using to sew on my button. Just going to bring those two tails together. Uh, okay. And I'll just snip off snip off the excess there of those two tail ends. And I'm going to actually tie a simple double knot in the back here to make that even more even more secure. I just don't want that to be any sort of hazard. If Melba gets to chewing it, it's under her neck so she most likely won't, but I don't want to take any chances. So I'm just going to thread my needle. I've got lots of this fluffy stuff everywhere now, but it's kind of it's kind of nice and soft and cute. So you know, I don't mind. Okay, so I'm just going to thread my needle with both of these tails, and I'm going to weave them in. But I'll do that off camera, and I'll come back and join you. So just finish off sewing your button and securing it into the back, and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so there I've got my button nice and secure in the back and I've got that ready to go. Now your option is here, you can sew on a little the little push stud on this opposite side, so the opposite to the button. So, I mean, you could sew one on here too if you wanted to, but you probably want that to be able to stay open like this. But if you want to stop these two edges coming, sort of falling out of alignment. It might not matter to you, but if you want to avoid that, you can just sew a little push stud onto the side here. I've got my little my little studs there. And I'm going to get some cotton. Okay, so I've got my smaller sewing needle and some cotton with a a uh, knot at the end. Now I'll just take the male edge of end of that of that push stud and I'm just going to sew that onto this corner and then I'll sew on the corresponding female female end on the other side so I'm going to finish this off camera so I'm just using you know just simple sewing techniques to sew this push stud onto the corner. So if you're choosing this option, go ahead and do the same thing and I'll meet you uh, once I'm done. Okay, so there's your scarf done. So as I said, this little back part just folds, folds over behind the neck and there's your scarf or neck warmer. It's very cute, huh? I love it. And little, you've got your little button and I've sewn on my little push stud there so I can just hold that other side in place and it sits beautifully so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial it's a nice quick one to make up and I think I love this herringbone stitch and I'm um, really partial to this sort of soft fluffy yarn so I hope you've enjoyed it too and um, I'd love to see the photos of the yarn that you've chosen um, how your scarf looks on your cat so please send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet so once again I apologize for my voice throughout this video tutorial um, as I said I have just recovered from the flu so I'm uh, I sound like I've been smoking for a lot of years, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I'm not a smoker. So um, yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks very much for being here and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye.
Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this uh, uh, <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to our video tu Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this herringbone neck warmer that you can see Melba wearing here. <laughs> you ready Melba? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 